Hey everyone, my name is Sando and this is my first devlog for my hardcore survival horror game. In this video I'll show you some progress I made for the game and also discuss some ideas I have for the future. The game is planned to be small but polished and that's exactly why I've spent 5 days working on this algorithm. But before I start explaining more in depth, pause the video and subscribe to my channel. It takes you a second to make my day. Now that we've taken care of that, let's get back to the algorithm. I was thinking of ways how to make the character feel more alive, and first thing I've decided to do was to add some procedural animation for the head and torso, such that those can move and rotate without affecting the animation. That is quite easily achievable using Unity Animation Rigging package. After a little bit of tweaking, I had a system which allowed me to rotate the character's head toward the pivot without affecting the animation. Then, by adding some inverse kinematic constraints to the body and head, I made it so the body rotates when the head can't anymore. As always, it didn't work from the first try. But once it did work, the character immediately started looking more alive. But now the difficult part came. I have a system which allows me to make the character look at a pivot, but I need a way to move this pivot and decide which things to look at in case there are more than one in the field of view. What if an object is more important than the other? What if character is looking at the same object for too long? In order to achieve some realistic head movement, I had to solve those problems and many other. It took me three completely different interpretations of the algorithm until I was proud with the result. First thing I did was thinking of how real humans actually look at things. And what I realized is that we first glance over everything, then objects that we found interesting catch our attention first and for a longer time. So here is how my last implementation of the algorithm works. Every item has a priority and curiosity float value, and two booleans, is checked and is interesting. Priority can range from 0 to 10, where 0 is something unimportant, such as a flower for example, and 10 is extremely important, a boss perhaps or some other enemy. If in character's field of view few objects appear, in case they were not checked, they will be added to a list called checklist. Then, going one by one through the list, the character will glance over each of the objects, setting their is checked boolean to true. If the item was checked and is interesting, it will be added to another list, called look list. After checking every object, the character will start looking at the objects from the list based on their priority value. When looking at an object, its curiosity value decreases. The higher the priority, the longer you have to look at an object. Objects with priority 10 will not lose their curiosity value, thus keeping your view forever. When curiosity reaches 0, the item is not interesting anymore, and the character looks at the next object from the list. But if the list is empty, the character will raise his head and look forward. When the player is not looking at the object, its curiosity value starts increasing until it reaches 1, also based on the priority value. Priority plays a role in head movement as well. If the object has a higher priority, the character will turn towards it much faster, and that adds some more realism to the system. Also, if the object gets out of your view sight, its checked will become false once again, and next time it will be checked again. One of the main priorities was to make this system reusable and easily implementable. So now, whenever I want to make an object lookable, all I have to do is simply apply the target script to any object, set its priority value to a desired one, and then set the position where I want the focus to be, aka where should the character look at. I've also started working on the general look of the game, and I think I will move towards this pixelated look. I do like the feel of it, what do you think? Also, I was thinking of different monsters ideas for the game and thought of something quite clever. I will scrap inspiration from the SCP Foundation. For those who don't know, the SCP Foundation is a fictional organization documented by the web-based collaborative fiction project of the same name. Within the website's fictional setting, the SCP Foundation is responsible for locating and containing individuals, entities, locations and objects that violate natural law, referred as SCPs. The real-world website is community-based and includes elements of many genres such as horror, science fiction and urban fantasy. 
So for the last few days I was reading about different scary and interesting SCPs and made myself a list with some of them. One of you suggested to look into Travers Henderson's creatures and I think I might get some inspiration from there as well. If you have any ideas for the game, let me know in the comments below and let's shape this game together. Also, join me on Twitter where we can discuss different topics, I sometimes post memes, jokes and news regarding the channel there. Last thing, next week is the exam week, that is why I'm not sure if I'll manage to upload the video, but I'll do my best. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time!